hey, we're in an airport. You're probably starting to see a running theme here that these normally start off this way. It's Thursday. We're starting on a new adventure. We're back on the P3. Really cool stuff coming. If you're new to the channel, my name is Matt Smithers. This is Unusual Attitudes, the YouTube channel that brings you some of the most unique aircraft in the world and some of the most unique aircraft operations in the world. We're about to get started. I hope you come along for the ride. Another 426, clear for takeoff runway 11.
Greenland, we got a problem. All right, guys, well, it's a balmy 25 degrees up here in Thule, and if you've never been here, uh, that makes it, uh, I don't know, almost summer. Still obviously got some snow on the ground, and while there's a little taxi that runs around, it's a pretty nice day by uh, Thule standards, so we're gonna walk up to the hangar. The boys up there working on this window, we're gonna go check it out, see where we stand, see if we're gonna be getting out of here pretty soon. So let's go up there and check it out. There you go. So we're up in the hangar, and it is, no kidding, probably 75 degrees in here. Uh, I'm sure all you can hear is the heaters. We got these monstrous heaters going on up here. Uh, but we've got this whole hangar to ourselves, and uh, we've got all our parts over here. We got an engine, we got some props, we got all our parts connexes and tools and things like that over here. So this is our base of operations out of Thule. Now, they've already been up here since the beginning of April, and uh, so they were flying out of here, and we're supposed to be flying out of Kangar, which is about two hours, three hours south of here. We had this issue with the windshield, so we brought it up here knowing that our parts, Connex, and everything else is up here in the hangar. And plus, it's a lot more comfortable for the guys to work on it. Um, so uh, I'll take you up there, we'll take a look at it. Wow, it's actually kind of hot in here. You get up here a couple feet off the deck and it's pretty toasty, I tell you what. So, okay, center windshield, flight engineer, my windshield. Got a couple of cracks. You can see where the uh, the heat air element uh, was arcing and sparking and caused this windshield to crack. All the hardware for the window has been completely removed at this point and it just has to come out um, and get replaced. We've got the panel. Don't quite have all the hardware we need, so uh, we're getting that in tomorrow and this window's gonna go in. We'll be ready to get out of here and uh, fly some more science missions, uh, probably Thursday. So, you'll also notice some other panels of the glare shield have been removed. We had a uh, an emergency shutdown handle uh, wiper switch that was bad. Each handle has two redundant switches, and one of them was bad on the number three E handle. So, uh, well, the plane's already down for maintenance. We went ahead and got that replaced, and that's done. And no, that's not going to buff out. So the B3 is a very different beast from the Super Guppy and the C-130. Even though people like to say they're cousins, they're very distant cousins. The only thing that's really similar are the power plants. And even the props are different. Not to mention they're a lot easier to get to to pull them through on pre-flight. After flying the C-130 for so long, coming back to the B3, it always surprises me how small the tires are, the main mounts as well as the nose tires. They're so much smaller. If you've never been up here to Thule Air Base, all the services are run by a Danish contract company. So we get kind of a nice mix of uh, European foods and uh, things in the store and the BX, uh, as well as mostly American stuff. So it's kind of cool to come out here for a little bit. I don't think I'd want to do a 12 month tour of duty up here, but uh, uh, it's kind of cool to come up here and check it out. And, and as I've mentioned, as soon as we get flying a little bit later this week, I'm going to bring all that science mission and all of that footage from inside the plane. When all the systems and sensors are up, we'll talk to some of the scientists and find out exactly what they're doing and what their sensors are on the aircraft for and the overall mission. If I haven't talked a lot about it, the whole point of Operation Ice Bridge, uh, which is the science campaign that we're on here, is we are measuring the uh, ice thickness, mostly the glacier thickness, but uh, also over the polar ice cap. So uh, we're using some frickin' lasers to measure that depth and, uh, and to get the data on how much that's varying from one year to the next. Hey guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the Operation Ice Bridge mission that I'm out here in Greenland for. It's gonna be a multi-part series with several videos on it. And I really mean this when I tell you I really appreciate everybody who's subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already, well of course, bam, smash that subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification every time I put up a new video. If you like this video and all of my other videos, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and that like button. It all makes a difference. Incidentally, it's 1.20 in the morning right now. It's a totally different place if you've never been here. It takes a little getting used to.
It's actually breezy right here. This is weird.